This version of me is done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. That took take off, bro. Designer has been in the game for over six years now, with one of the biggest accomplishments that any music artist could ever achieve. A diamond plaque with a solo song. And according to his Instagram profile, it's two times diamond. I'm not sure if that's true, but if you look at the RIAA certifications, it was six or seven times platinum in 2017, and that's five years ago. This is both designer's biggest accomplishment and his biggest setback in the eyes of the fans. He's seen as a one-hit wonder, although the truth is he's had a minimum of two hits, including Timmy Turner. But the past several months have been filled with not only career struggles for designer, but also personal. Losing two close friends in the industry, PNB Rock and Takeoff of the Migos, and we've seen him fall out of character deeply. Designer's rise was meteoric. It was like he always had this positive energy around him. Never a dull moment. Someone who you could see the smile and gratitude of success every moment, and it was infectious. But things weren't always this way for a young designer. He grew up in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn, in the Louis Armstrong Project housing complex, a dangerous neighborhood down the block from Jay-Z's Marcy Projects. Designer's grandfather was actually a prominent blues guitarist and singer by the name Sidney Selby and went by Guitar Crusher, who spent many years performing and living in Berlin, Germany, even marrying a German woman. While hustling and growing up as a young teenager in his housing project, Designer would start rapping at age 14, the same age he got shot. Today. I ain't gonna lie like I, I was a bad kid. I was a hard head, I was in the streets doing dumb shit. You know the average stupid shit, you feel me? I got hit in my hip. Mm. Right here. Wow. There, right there in my hip. And it just was like, it was a little bit of blood, and that little bit of blood, I wasn't no serious it, in and out. I was in the hospital 10 minutes, okay. 30 minutes, you feel me? But it was just that moment that really said, yo, mind your business. Right. When that happened to me, it just was like, I knew I wasn't supposed to be there. You feel me? I always had a voice in my head that said, don't, don't do the bad. To, to see my moms and hear my moms pass out at work, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't pleasant. Designer became the go-to in his neighborhood for anyone who wanted to do some music. He ended up going to Thomas Jefferson High School in Brooklyn with a new mentality of networking, doing features, making music with others. And he was always tried to uplift those around him, especially his friends. After releasing Zombie Walk on December 3rd of 2015, he would release Panda less than two weeks later, and this would be the song to change his life forever. It would grow on SoundCloud before being re-released officially in February of 2016 when he signed to Kanye West's Good Music record label. When interviewed on Genius talking about his first song, Zombie Walk, that would end up getting more attention after Panda, he elaborated on who it was dedicated to and the story behind it. Now this song is for my man Savage who's disabled, you feel me, crippled, yeah, he handicapped, so it, he, people used to make fun of his walk, but I said, nah, that's the zombie walk, we're going to change it for you, so it's all just a shout out to my man Savage, and you feel me, just making you feel me his style, uh, his way of life, you feel me, a wave and make it the zombie walk. A wholesome story of designer trying to spin something people clowned his friend with into a positive and having him as a feature on the song. Designer would be at the legendary release party in Madison Square Garden at age 17 for Kanye's The Life of Pablo, with his song being used on the track Part 2. Everything was amazing. He was performing everywhere. At one concert, throwing up, but still continuing to perform right after that. <laughs> Appearances, and more. But this is the first time we also got some controversy surrounding Designer due to his sound being very similar, nearly identical, to Future, who had just gone on his mixtape run in 2015. It didn't seem to bother Designer all too much because he was on a high. He had the number one song in the country, something that Future had never accomplished at that point. But after a couple of months, people began wondering if Designer was just Panda, and if he would follow it up with anything else. That's when the 2016 XXL freshman class came in, and it shocked people. While delivering the individual freestyle, Designer would sound nothing like Future, Panda, or Zombie Walk. Timmy, 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 he be wishing for a burner, the key lay by he walking, you know that it's on the... He stole the show with an acapella freestyle and sent the social media world into a frenzy. This was viral. 
and everybody wanted the full song released. And if it wasn't already a song, they wanted it turned into a song. He also released his first mixtape, New English, a couple of days after the Timmy Turner freestyle, which was, I would say, a disaster of a release. With the majority of the songs sounding unfinished, some less than a minute, I think it was Monsters and Villains, that was 37 seconds, that should have gone for way longer, and no real direction or structure. The official Timmy Turner song would be released a month later, peaking at number 34 on the Hot 100. A lot of the hype had fizzled out for the song, but the song also changed the energy from the first freestyle. It had a darker undertone to it that some like more and some like less, but I would still consider it a hit. Just look at the numbers. Unfortunately for Designer, he would get arrested that September on drugs, weapons, and menacing charges for a road rage incident, which he describes as just throwing his hands up and the guy who had swerved in the lane at night in front of them must have thought it was a gun and reported it. They were in jail for three days before bonding out, and Designer recalls people in jail calling him Panda in a Cage. It would come out that the drugs were not Designers, they were steroids that belonged to his driver slash security. Designer would still be riding on the heat of his two hot songs, doing shows, hell, worldwide. But this was also the time when he would cool off a little bit, in a weird time for good music as a whole. He felt disconnected from Kanye Moore, and left on his own. He was supposed to have a project release with PMB Rock that didn't end up releasing, and the next single he put out was Outlet, which had a sponsorship and was a great song, but didn't hit how people who heard the song felt it should have. I mean, this should have been everywhere in the sports world at least. And I'm on the same page with the people that feel like it didn't hit as well as it should have. During this time period of late 2017 to 2018, it wasn't so hot for Designer. He was beginning to cool off in the general hip-hop sphere. He wasn't getting much support from Kanye or Good, not much label push, and he speaks about it in an interview, feeling taken advantage of. I didn't learn anything from this position, you know what I mean? I just was there. Um, it was more like, uh, Zana, you give me music, I jump on it, and when I need my situation done, nobody's there to answer for it, you know what I mean? It was just like, what the f***? Even with now with New English, like nobody else promoted that shit off the camp. Good thing Zana was big, you feel me? Yeah. But, Wait, like, no one did? Like, like no I one at all? Shit, I had pushing and shit, you know what I mean? But, like, for the whole team to be, like, a genuine embracing them, like, yeah, it was just like, for me, it was what it was. And that's why I was just like, yo, it was weird, because it was like, yo, bro, all right, I'm the, new en- I'm the new energy, but I feel like nobody really wanted to give me that, like, yo, for me, that, that real big love, like, that, that knowledge that I really needed. Because I'm not a kid that asks money, you know what I mean? I don't give a fuck for the money. Like, my deal, I didn't even, I didn't even sign my deal for crazy bread. Like, you feel me? Like, I signed my deal for a, a pound cake. You feel me? Had, like, five. He had good reason to feel this way. Sure, Ye definitely helped Panda elevate to mainstream success by putting it on his platform, as well as even featuring on the remix to Timmy Turner, which is one of those lesser-known facts for how big of a deal that was. But Designer probably expected to be a part of a team, especially how he grew up seeing good music. But it felt like he just got used for his song, and when that was done, he was disposed of and just left on an island to fend for himself. He recalls his time with Ye and wanting to learn a lot, but not feeling welcome so like that like i wasn't really in it for the bread bro i was really in it for the knowledge i wanted to be around Kanye west to learn you know what i mean and know certain things and you know what i mean to help me get prepared for this especially coming out of the 10th grade it wasn't about none of that shit for me my pops wound up catching heart attacks and wow. my birthday going past i'm like this nigga not even telling me happy birthday like yeah. it's mostly like that and then i was just like nah bro i can't be around a brother like this you for me like you know what i mean so i just like yo let me just move on <laughs> Because it was like my like I couldn't express myself the way I like what was going on in my crib to my like to my label mate. So maybe I should never try to like run like um my emotion in the game. But it was just something like I was just like, you know, I was young. I didn't I never was taught not to keep your emotions out the game. Because I was coming from a place where not too many people made it, bro. You've- keep in mind, Designer was just in high school getting into this game. And the way he reminisces on it lets you know he just wanted a big brother or elder figure in this industry game to let him know what to do, what not to do. He admitted he was very nervous in almost all of his early interviews, didn't know what to say and what not to say, and thought that signing to Ye was going to be that kind of relationship. But when he wasn't even able to get a hold of a guy whose label he signed to, it hurt him. 
while designer had pretty much fallen off at this point in the USA and hip hop wise, he got a huge look globally when Steve Aoki put him on a song that he remixed with K-pop superstar group BTS in late 2017 and took him on tour in 2018. While this was great to open him up to a new audience, he was growing less and less relevant in hip hop. So much so that when he was going to release his next project, LOD, Life of Designer in May of 2018, it was seven tracks and ended up debuting at number 161 on the weekly charts. Designer would pretty much go ghost for all of 2019. The only song he appeared on was a feature on electronic artist Dylan Francis' song Drip, and it was likely because he was sorting out his legal situation to leave good music and go independent. And that wish came true because in 2020, he became independent. But how is someone who came into the game at 17 with a smash hit song on a major label, one of the biggest hits in American music history, really, when we're talking diamond and up, and never really built a fan base before being signed, supposed to know how to operate independently and build up a buzz as well as hype all over again after now having the expectations of hits and being labeled as fallen off, it's a big hurdle. Even worse, that 2020 is when everything was locked down. He couldn't do shows. He released three songs that year in a mixtape, not doing too much noise outside of the people that followed him. And his grandfather, the musician, had passed away too. Same deal happened in 2021. And this likely began to get to designer as it would anybody. You're 23, 24, still really young, but your peak is behind you and you have no idea what to do next. Fortunately for designer, he wasn't struggling financially. He definitely made many, many millions of dollars. And we didn't see him flexing expensive purchases as much as other artists. But there's still that drive and desire in most young men to want to progress. And designer wasn't progressing in his career numbers wise at the end of 2021 designer would release a music video titled letter to yay where he raps about his experience and appreciation for the opportunity yay gave him over a jay dilla beat and 2022 was a year of loss for designer we would first see a public outburst of frustration from him directed towards rapper estg nigga all the shot to charge me 75,000 estg bro Yo, you're garbage. You is hot garbage. You can't perform like me. You can't never make a song like anybody in New York City. You're trash, bro. You're trash. You know what you are? That ass what I'm doing right now. You feel me? Stop playing with me. For real, for real. Y'all niggas ain't never sell what I sold. That's on my mother. <laughs> Y'all niggas still trap your little gold records. Kick all them chains on your neck, boy. For real. You a slave to the game. <laughs> the way I interpreted this was designer felt insulted and disrespected. And I don't think this was directed at ESTG as much as it was directed at everyone who was clowning him and saying he fell off and he was irrelevant now. And disregarding, he accomplished one of the most impressive feats that someone can do commercially in music. Nobody really wanted to work with him like that. And the only rapper that publicly showed love to designer since the lockdown and said he was working with him was pnb rock in a tweet saying my first session of 2021 and i'm doing it with my brother willie donut i made my first platinum song with gang no kizzy selfish off to a great start at life of designer in a cut pnb rock was also somebody who nobody wanted to work with either after he had gone independent but wanted to talk about how much they loved him when he passed away the better question would be if they were so close to him how come they needed to post four-year-old pictures with him on their RIP post when he was hot, instead of something more recent? Designer would apologize for his statements to ESTG the next day. Yes, sir. Y'all already know the vibes. Your boy Designer. You feel what I'm saying? I'm going to just leave it like, that's that man Price. You feel what I'm saying? Word. No disrespect to their camp over there. You feel what I'm saying? They handling business over there. He would lose his close friend PNB Rock on September 12th, 2022. He would just put up a photo of him as an RIP without a caption. But it was when Takeoff passed away in November that Designer would be on Instagram Live and completely break down. I swear, why? Why? Why do we do this? Why do we do this? Why do we f***ing do this? I swear to God, it said ain't nothing. I'm done rap. I'm done rap. Yo, you hear me? 
is done. This version of me is done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. That's the take off, bro. It's done. The first time ever we had seen designer come out in public, not positively and not on some at least moderate energy, was his frustration with the ESTG feature. He never had issues with any other rapper. This is the second time, and it's him breaking down at the death of Takeoff, saying he was done with rap. These are first-time occurrences in a six-year span of a career, almost seven now. This wasn't a pattern of behavior. The designer would pop back out when 21 Savage said he would beat anyone in his freshman class in the verses, to which designer replied with this video clip. 2021 Savage, I killed everybody walking. Put them all in the coffin. Double XL floss and BT. How do you watch it? BT, wallet for wallet. Kill everybody walking. You know that it's on the finest. He would release a song on November 10th titled Star in the Room with the cover as a repurpose of the 2016 Double XL cover, but with Kids Next Door characters, and face a lot of We Thought You Quit rap comments from fans. I think it's too much to go in on designer for releasing music when he was in an emotional state at the tragic loss of a friend when he said he quits. I think he's fed up with how the game chewed him up and spit him out, judging by the rest of his ESTG call out that I'll play for you guys right now. Real talk, son. Let me, let me get this clear, bro, because y'all consumers, man, are my friends, man. Let me make this shit from number one topic, you know what I mean? Y'all my friends, but y'all got to really, like, really understand who you buying your product from. If you want your product from niggas that's really just buying change, selling you a fake ass dream, you feel what I'm saying? Because a lot of these artists, bro, is getting put in these rooms, bro. It's a lot of, it's a lot of relationship deals. It's not even what you think it seemed to be, bro. It don't want to be that, bro. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I really be in the room with a lot of folk, with a lot of folks, man, and niggas be doing holding niggas down. So make sure y'all niggas really like be fans of real performance artists, people that can really really take the stage from United States to the middle of Japan, bro, to out Oanaka, Oan Oanaka, bro. Out, you know what I mean? Japan, bro. Military camps, bro, in, in Korea, bro. You think I'm saying? Um, Let's take it down to Nairobi, bro. Let's take it to Kenya, bro. Designer spit some real gems in this. There are a lot of bells and whistles at play that are put in front of fans to make it seem like someone is hot when they're really not. And they keep faking it until enough real people buy in. And now, they're actually popular. I hope Designer is able to find some direction and success. Either it being a resurgence in music, and a solid fan base, or even if it's in something else, whatever that may be. The truth is, the time for people who were cool with Designer that are still hot to reach out and at least lend, not necessarily a helping hand musically, but just check in on him and make sure he's doing good, would be now with everything he's gone through. But the saddest part of this story is that the situation Designer is in right now is not much different than the one PNB Rock was in before he was tragically killed. Both independent, both had gotten out of a situation with a major label, didn't really know how to move independently, both had had a couple of hits, had experience with everyone wanting to be around them and work with them when they were hot, but they had cooled off, weren't hot anymore for multiple different reasons, and now everyone that was around them and in their DMs when they were hot won't return calls, won't be seen with them, and forget having a feature done without a taxing price they would give the next man. I think it's just a lesson that people don't ever really learn their lesson. It's the same cycle of appreciate them when they can benefit you, forget about them when they can no longer benefit you, and appreciate them and wish you could have done things differently when they're gone.